Okay, we are going to start our discussion about 1.4 today. So 1.4 discusses limits and the derivative. I'm going to do this lecture in two parts, or these examples in two parts, because they each warrant, you know, their own time, because they're both two very fundamental concepts for calculus that we're going to need. So for this first for this first one, today we are just going to focus on limits. So I want to do a couple examples. I know you've read the book. So let's first look at a couple examples that involve looking at the graph of a function. So my first example that I want to talk about today is let's look at the graph of this function and let's determine the limit as x approaches 3 of this function f of x. And this then is going to be this blue line is f of x, of course, which is the same as y. So when we start looking at limits, remember basically what a limit is asking is what is happening to the function values as x approaches 3. And when we talk about a limit, we want to make sure that we understand that as we're looking at what the function values are doing, I want to know what is what are the function values doing as I approach 3 from the left and as I approach 3 from the right. So if you notice, if I start looking at what my function values are, so let's get kind of close to 3, let's say right here. I go up and I grab a function value and I'm, I'm here at like, I don't know, whatever that is, like 2 maybe. Right? And so as I get closer and closer to 3 from the left and I grab these values, notice that these values are going to get closer and closer to 1. Likewise, if I go toward 3, let's say on the right, so I'm going to pick some values here and I'm going to come over and grab y values and I pick some here and I'm going to come over and grab y values. Notice again that my y values are getting closer and closer to 1. So what we can actually say then is that my function as x approaches 3, my function values approach 1. Notice limits are very, very different than actual function values. If I asked you what is f of 3, meaning not as I get close to 3, but what is my actual function value when x is equal to 3? See how this function right here has that little hole right there? That means that my function is undefined at that point. So my function is undefined at that point. So we would say either undefined or we could say DNE, the dreaded DNE which means does not exist. So the difference here is that limits allow us a method for describing the behavior of a function. I'm going to say that again. Limits allow us the ability to describe the behavior of a function as I approach an x value. Not what happens at the x value, but what happens as we get really, 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 really close to 3. What is happening to my function values? They are getting closer and closer to 1. It kind of, it's hard to see that now. <laughs> um, let's look at another one. So now I want to look at this guy. If it'll let me. All right. So let's look at, let's look at this one now. So now what I, again, this is the same kind of idea here. I want to, um, let's, let's get a little bit more in there. Determine or evaluate if it exists, the limit as x approaches 3 of this function f of x. Okay, so again, what is the limit asking? What happens to the function values as my x values get closer and closer to 3 from the left and the right hand side? So again, a limit needs to be one number. Okay, I can't have two numbers. I can't say, well, sometimes it goes to 4 and sometimes it goes to 5. So that might give you a little example of what's going to happen here. Um, so let's look at, look at what happens here. So I'm going to approach 3 first from the left. If I grab 
I'm going to say, you know, maybe I'm at two. And I come over and I'm, and I'm at maybe like three or something. And I'm going to grab another x value that's closer. And I'm going to come over, maybe I'm at 3.5. And then I grab another x value. Why don't I just use the shift key? Over. And if you notice, I'm getting closer. What am I getting closer and closer to? So what, what my, my function values then as I approach 3 from the left are getting closer and closer to 4. So I might think to myself, well, that's probably a reasonable answer that as x, my x values get closer to 3, I'm going to equal 4. The problem is when we say a limit, okay, as x approaches 3, this means from both sides of 3 not just from the left-hand side, not just from the right-hand side, but from both sides. So I think you're going to see kind of what's going to happen here. So let's look at what would happen if I approached 3 from the right-hand side. So if I grab an x value here, and then I come over, notice I'm not very close to 4. I'm going to grab another x value that is close to 3 on the right. I'm going to grab my function and see what is my corresponding y value. And clearly here as I get closer and closer to 3 from the right, ooh, I'm really close there to 3, my function values are going to get really, really close to 5. Okay, so as I approach from the right, what do my function values get closer and closer to? They get closer and closer to 5. So as I approach from the left, I go to 4. As I approach from the right, I go to 5. So what do we say about this limit? The limit does not exist. Or we can say does not exist. I would accept undefined. You could just say no limit. I'm not able to describe the behavior of this function as I approach 3. Okay. So again, in this case, not only is the limit undefined, but also my function does not exist there. Let me show you how this could be a little bit different. Let's say that I just want to point out something here. So let's say that this is a whole new example now. If, I, if we look here now, I, so I'm clearly my limit doesn't exist, but this is some dis a discussion we'll have on 1.5. What if I defined a new point to exist right here? Notice here that in this case, if this is my graph, let's say this is my new graph here, f of 3 in this case would be defined. Let's say we're up here at 6. Okay, f of 3 would be 6. So my function can be defined, but still the limit as x approaches 3 of my function does not exist. Again, what does the limit describe? It describes the behavior of the function as I approach 3 from the left, and as I approach 3 from the right at 3, my function equals 6. But my limit does not exist because as I approach 3 from the left and right, I don't approach the same number. Eventually, we'll probably talk about, well, what if I just, wouldn't it be interesting to talk about approaching from the left or the right? And is there some notation that I can use to do that? And there will be. But for right now, we're Anytime we talk about the limit, we want to describe the behavior of the function as my x values approach that number from the left and right. So let's let's talk about what um, what we could do to find limits algebraically. So that was graphically. That's how we find limits graphically. So let's look at another way that we can do this algebraically. So in your book, when you read through the chapter you should have written down all of the limit rules, all of the limit properties that was on page 84, and then the limit of a polynomial function and the rational function. That box on page 85 is very important to write down in your notes, along with these examples, of course. So let's look at the limit, let's say, as x approaches 4 of the rational function x squared minus 1 all over x minus 1. So that box on page 85 said that the limit of a rational function is just the function evaluated at that number if you don't get 0 in the denominator. So if you notice, I can take 4, and all I really care about is does this 4 make the denominator 0? If I plug 4 into here, I get 4 minus 1, which is 3. 3 is definitely not 0, so this limit is going to exist. And it's going to be as easy as just taking, taking the 4 and plugging it in. 
So I get 4 squared minus 1 all over 4 minus 1, which would be 16 minus 1 all over 3, which again is 15 over 3, which is 5. So sure enough, the limit exists. What does this imply? That as my x values approach 4 from either side, the function x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 is going to get closer and closer to 5. Let's look at another example. So I'm sure you're wondering, but Sarah, what if it's not such a nice number like 4? These are the interesting ones. What if it's a number like 1? Now, you would think, wouldn't you? Well, Sarah, when I plug in 1 on the top, I'm going to get 1 minus 1, which is 0, which is fine. Remember, 0 in the numerator is not a big deal, unless there is also a 0 in the denominator. If you plug in a 1 in the bottom, you get 1 minus 1, which is also 0. So it kind of looks like this limit doesn't exist, but that's actually not true. If, again, what do we care about the behavior of this function? Now, if this was my function, f of 1, if I ask what happens right at 1, I would get 0 over 0. So that is undefined, does not exist, okay? But this is different when we're talking about limits. Remember, limits don't care about what happens at 1. Limits just care about what happens around 1. So what I'm going to do, as I'm sure many of you see, the top is a difference of squares. So I'm going to factor the numerator into x minus 1, x plus 1. Oh, that was a good line. I'm pretty proud of myself for that. I didn't even have to use my, my cheating. Um, so I get the top difference of squares. If you don't know how to factor, you should email me. I can send you some um, pra practice for factoring. We're going to be factoring a lot in this class. And as you notice, I can cancel these x minus 1s. So this becomes, and notice I am writing these limit signs because I have not taken the limit yet. If you do not write this, I will count off because we have not taken the limit. All we're doing is we're messing with the function, right? So I'm taking the limit of x plus 1 now. Now can I plug in the 1? You betcha. If I plug in this 1, I just get 1 plus 1, which is 2. So the graph of this function actually is, what this is saying is that in the graph of this function, as my x values approach 1, I actually look at 2. The graph of this function is kind of interesting. If you look at the graph of this, I'll just graph it by hand really quick. What this function does is it looks like the line x plus 1, but when x is 1, it leaves out what it really should be. So if I look here, what you end up getting is you get at 1, you get this circle right here, and then everywhere else, it's basically the line, uh, pretend that's a line, oh, the shift key didn't work. I get the line x plus 1 right here, but that little 2 right there is out. And notice if I went over to x equals 4, my example above, 2, 3, 4, and I went up, uh, sure enough, I would come over here and I would be up here at 5, so that makes sense. Um, I think that's all I wanted to do for limits for you. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll, well, I want to do one more example. I just can't help myself. Uh, this will be a quick one. What about something like this? I just wanted to show you a time. So maybe I have x squared minus 1 again, but on the bottom I have x minus 2. Notice if I put in 2, on the top I get 4 minus 1, which is 3. What would I get on the bottom? I get 0. I hate even writing that in mathematics. That is an undefined statement, right? What we're going to see later is this is basically equivalent to infinity, and infinity is not a number. So when I look at something like this, if I there's no way to factor that out, or if I don't get 0 over 0. If you get 0 over 0, what that implies is you have some algebra to do, and the limit could possibly exist. I don't get 0 over 0, I get 3 over 0, which is definitely undefined, so you could say does not exist, you could say undefined here, anything like that, because that factor right there will not cancel out. Hold on, I can't stop myself, sorry. Whereas, what if I had x, the limit as x approaches to of, I don't know, x squared um, minus 3x plus 2, 
all over x minus 2. If you notice here, if I plug in 2, I get 4 minus 6 plus 2, all over 2 minus 2, obviously. That is 0 over 0. Again, what does that imply? Because I get 0 over 0, that implies that I can do a little bit more work. And sure enough, I guess this is another example. If I take the limit as x approaches 2, I'm going to factor the top. This factors into x minus 1 x minus 2, so that 0 over 0 gave me that little hint that I have some more to do, and I do. I can cancel out those things that gave me the 0 over 0. Again, notice how I'm writing the limit sign because I have not actually taken the limit yet. Now if I plug that in, I get 2 minus 1, which is 1. Like always, email me or call me if you have questions on this stuff. Um, the next lecture, we will be talking about the derivative. So go ahead and when you read in the book about the derivative, I will be lecturing a little bit more about the derivative in the next video.